Hi everybody, Hunter the Hunt and Hacking in here and welcome back to the Leaders of Finland series. Now, in prior Leaders of Finland videos, you might notice that I have a tendency of talking about either failed governments or governments that were in power for short amounts of time or governments that were voted out of power. And it's not really a surprise why I keep picking these kinds of topics, it's because Talking about failed governments is admittedly a lot more fascinating and interesting. But I am sensing that I may be taking this series in a very negative direction, so I decided let's change it up a little bit. And in this video I wanted to talk about who I thought was Finland's best president. Now presidential history and factoids are something that I'm always very envious of when it comes to Americans because they've had so many presidents that they can make entire top 10 and bottom 10 lists on them and also because their presidents are maybe a little bit more interesting than the Finnish presidents but our presidents have also had some very interesting moments in history despite the fact that we have had so few of them. I'll remind again that the Finnish presidential term is six years and with one key exception almost every president who has run for re-election directly after their presidency has almost always won that particular election. And what I decided to do also in this video was to first present you with the pool of candidates that I think are possibly Finland's best president. And I decided that I would also present the best and worst aspects of each president. But this also means that I'm going to have to make some disqualifications because there's a few presidents who obviously couldn't be in the running. The three that I'm immediately disqualifying are our three most recent presidents, and this is not because I think any of them are particularly bad. It's just that these people unfortunately represent the Finnish presidency as it stands in the modern day, which is to say, the office of president doesn't really hold any actual power. I also have to immediately disqualify presidents number four and six, that is to say Kyrsti Kallio and Marshall Mannerheim. I don't think that's a controversial stance, after all, both of them were elderly old men who admittedly became president way too late in their life. In Gallio's case, he was even going to resign, but then ironically ended up dying in office before he could do so. And for Marshall Mannerheim, his presidency is remembered particularly for how unmemorable it was considering what an exciting life he had lived up to that point. And I also feel I need to also disqualify our first president, Stolberg, from the ranking. Not because I thought he was a particularly bad president. He really didn't like being president. Also, he was the first one to do it, so he had to set a lot of precedents. And I don't think it's fair to judge him on those merits. He was a very reserved figure which ironically might directly have led to the fact that amongst the general public, the office of the president became highly respected. Yes, he did rerun the presidency unsuccessfully a few more times. And lastly, I will have to, of course, discount Lauri Relander, which I think is the only person who is even worthy of mentioning as possibly Finland's worst president. Now, like I said, Relander actually has a few genuine accomplishments to his name. As our second president, he was the first to actually make state visits to other countries, and he was actually very well liked by the public because he was undoubtedly the youngest of our early presidents. And as I mentioned in our presidential facts video, he was also our first president to appoint a female minister, which was pretty historical. But of course, the thing that stained his entire reputation was the fact that he was maybe slightly petty and that he openly voiced support for the Lapua movement. Yeah, that's not a good thing. So that obviously leaves our pool of candidates for the best Finnish president. In chronological order, we have president number three, Svin Huvud, president number five, Risto Ruti, president number seven, Juho Pasikivi, then our longest served president, number eight, Murho Kekkonen, and as a wild card, I would also throw in Mauno Koivisto. And now that we have our poll, I'd really like to start talking about these candidates, starting probably with the two most contrasting figures of the ranking, who are Kekkonen and Koivisto. Kekkonen, of course, was Finland's only four-term president, who held power for the longest amount of time and was admittedly the most powerful president Finland ever had, while Koivisto followed directly after him and became president more or less because he was the only guy who dared to stand up to Kekkonen. Now I've already promised to make a video about Kekkonen, so I'm not going to go into too many details, but starting from the late 60s, the thing that made Kekkonen stand out as president is the fact how he liked to play hardball diplomacy with the Soviet Union, to the point where the Soviets, if not feared, at least respected him to the point where they thought it was in their best interest that he stay in power. Which is unusual because Kekkonen was not a socialist. Remind you all that he was a center party politician. And you might be tempted to say that Kekkonen was about the closest thing Finland ever had to a dictator, but in Kekkonen's case he was also very skilled at at least maintaining an illusion of a working democracy. 
Because while getting elected president four times over sounds extremely suspicious, I do need to remind you that these were actual democratic elections that were held where people voted and there were actual candidates running against him. It again speaks to the fact that Kekkonen really became a very trusted figure in Finnish politics, a highly mythologized figure, but also a highly controversial figure as well. And that is really the number one negative thing about Kekkonen that I have to say is that, is that his position and the way he carried himself as Finland's head of state really undermined parliamentary democracy. Essentially, there was not a government during Kekkonen's reign, which I will remind you included the entirety of the 60s and 70s, that Kekkonen didn't directly play a hand in. That is to say, he was displeased with a certain prime minister, that prime minister was not gonna stay in their job for very long. Which is when one of them, a certain Mauno Koivisto, decided to stand up to him and decided not to play ball with him. It was quite a blow to Kekkonen's authority. Koikisto is actually often criticized as being one of Finland's worst presidents because there's a lot of people who feel he didn't really do a whole lot as president and I will also agree that Koivisto's main failing as president was the fact that he did allow the president's powers to fade but I also have to remind you that what that the one thing that makes comparing different Finnish presidents so difficult is the fact that they ruled over such contrasting periods of time. So Koivisto was president during a relatively peaceful and successful time for Finland. But at the same time, I do actually respect Koivisto that he had such restraint as president and did not use his power as brazenly as Kekkonen. Despite my growing cynicism as I get older, I am still a believer in parliamentary democracy, so this is the reason why I respect Koivisto so much more than Kekkonen. As I mentioned, Koivisto and Kekkonen had very different personalities when it came to dealing with the press. Kekkonen was known for giving a lot of off-the-cuff comments and being very straight with them, whereas Koivisto was a more of a quiet ponderer, which again also maybe alienated him in the eyes of the public. The thing that has only come into light since Koivisto left the presidency is the fact that he actually did quite a lot, he just, but he did a lot of his most important stuff behind the scenes. I've mentioned in a previous video that Koivisto got criticized for not recognizing as Estonia's independence from the Soviet Union. The truth is that during the Cold War, Koivisto had actually low-key and secretly been funding Estonian independence movements, so yeah. Needless to say, though, neither Kekkonen nor Koivisto is my candidate for the best president ever. I think both of them have way too glaring flaws for that to be the case. So then we come to president number three, Per Svinhuvud who was also Finland's first prime minister. And Sven Hubud really is a powerhouse of Finnish politics. And after Kekkonen, he has probably the most direct shows of power that made him such a great president. The extreme right Lapua movement orchestrated something called the Mansala Uprising. And during this, Sven Hubud gave a radio speech where he basically rebuked the, the entirety of the Lapua movement and, and was able to make them stand down. You have to understand that the president having so much power that even this extreme right group respected him too much to actually keep on with this uprising that was going on. And of course, I do have to give Sven Hubud a little bit of credit because he was president during one of Finland's darkest hours, which was the Great Depression. And another thing that makes that radio speech so notable is the fact that, of course, the Lapua movement's goal was to destroy any and all left sympathizers in Finland. Sven Hubud himself was by no means a friend to the political left. He, a word that would best describe him is a very rampant anti-socialist. However, he was prime minister during the Finnish Civil War. He had seen the political violence that had happened. And like a lot of these old guard politicians of the early years, he did not want to see similar kind of violence break out again, so this is another reason why I highly respect him. However, the very reason why Svin Hubud is also not my candidate for the best president ever is kind of the same as Kekkonen. He was very authoritarian as a president, and moreover, there were three governments that ruled during his presidency, and two of these were minority governments. Now, I'll give Svin Hubud a little bit of credit here. Like I said, the Great Depression was just going on, and Svin Hubud had this very legitimate belief that a minority government made up of experts was better at handling the Great Depression and thus uh, saving Finland's financial future. But again, as a notable exception, he excluded all left-leaning parties from these governments, which were all minority governments. So yeah, that kind of direct meddling in the Finnish government is not something that I think a president should be allowed to do. And while I found the same flaw in Kekkonen, at least in Kekkonen's case, his picking and choosing of who got to be in the government was not tied to party lines. He basically allowed whoever was useful for him to go into government, not just anybody who was from his party. Now, Risto Ruti, our wartime president, is probably the most difficult president to rank because 
a lot of his decision making actually had to do with how Finland was going to handle the war. And Rutte is also one of these figures still regarded very highly in Finnish presidential history because he is often referred to as our martyred president. That is to say, he resigned in order to allow Finland to have better chances at getting a favorable peace agreement with the Soviet Union, and then the Soviets forced the Finns to to arrest, trial, and imprison him, a series of events that was not very popular with the Finnish public. And I think I need to make a video one day about Ruti's pre-presidential career, because I actually think some of the stuff that he did before his presidency was far more interesting. He and the main thing that I can say about Ruti, which is, I guess, both a positive and the negative, was the fact that he was very good at playing diplomacy with Nazi Germany, who was Finland's ally during World War II. Though I need to stress, Ruti did not like Adolf Hitler at all, but not because he didn't like his ideology, but because he thought Hitler was too commonplace. Yes, Ruti was one of those old-school highbrow types, but he knew Hitler was a huge fanboy of Mannerheim, who was the head of the Finnish military, which means that Ruti's presidency was dominated by this very delicate dance between himself, Mannerheim, and Hitler. So that's a problematic chapter of history to really try to handle, so I would also say Ruti is not my candidate for the best president either, despite his positive attributes. Which of course leaves us with Juho Pasikivi. And yes, Pasikivi is without doubt my favorite president, and easily Finland's best president. The thing you need to understand is that Pasikivi actually came into power somewhat accidentally. He wasn't elected for his first term, but he was picking up after Marshall Mannerheim resigned because of his advanced age and poor health. Basikivi was already a well-known diplomat. For instance, he had been a diplomat in Russia for many years. And after the Second World War, his number one goal in life was to normalize the relationship between Finland and the Soviet Union. The thing that helped him with this was the fact that because he had spent so much time in Russia, he was a fluent speaker of the language and he understood the Russian mentality better than anyone else and was extremely successful in letting the Soviets know that even though Finland did not belong into the red bloc of the Cold War, that after World War II had ended, that Finland would not be a threat to the Soviets and made it his goal in life to make sure that the Soviets understood that all Finland wanted was peaceful coexistence. And this diplomatic track was so successful that that it ended up becoming Finland's foreign policy for pretty much the rest of the Cold War. Although Kekkonen did, of course, put his own little flavoring on it. And I just highly respect Pasikivi because this was clearly something that he was very passionate about. And now, did Pasikivi have certain failings as president or as a political figure? Yes, absolutely. I do mean this. There is this wonderful, hilarious clip from when Finland hosted the Olympics during the 1950s. And because English was already a much more globally used language even back then than any other, of course the opening ceremonial speech had to be held by the president in English, which Pasekivi did not speak one word of. But I still recommend checking this pre-filmed footage of him clearly and painfully reading the English script from a piece of paper. It is so hilarious. And one other baffling thing is that Pasikivi was apparently somewhat involved in the peace talks with the Russians already during World War II. But once the armistice was signed, Pasikivi was actually completely uninterested in how the rest of World War II would turn out. For him, the only thing that mattered is that Finland was able to get on the good side of the Russians again. Because in his mind, there was no other immediate threat. So yeah, to say that Pasikivi was a bit of an obsessed weirdo is also true. But at the same time, he was a very successful obsessed weirdo, if that makes any sense. So anyway, that was my video on who I thought was Finland's best president. Tell me, who is your favorite Finnish president and why? Drop it in the comments. I'm Hunter the Hunter Mackin and see you on the next one.